Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and these are my favorite adventure and dual sport boots. ADV riding is my jam, but I actually don't like adventure boots. They're too heavy, too rigid, and too bulky in my opinion. See, my adventures go from where the road ends to where the trail ends to beyond. And for that last stage, I need something that's comfortable enough to actually get off my bike and hike a kilometer into the mountain and climb down a cave, if necessary. So my rider hiker of choice is gonna be Icon's Patrol Waterproof Boot. And this is my own pair and they're absolutely stunning. The best piece of motorcycle footwear I've ever owned and not a dime over $200. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to make them last though because Icon replaced the Patrol with something crappy and more expensive. So if I were to put a new rider hiker into my lineup right now, I would choose the Alpine Stars Roam 2. Yes, it's a touring boot, and yes, I still think it's the best choice. The Roam has a heel counter, a toe box, it has ankle armor on both the pointy bits. We have a laminated shin shield and a steel shank sole, which is going to round out that CE-approved suit of armor. It also comes up a little bit higher than my patrols, so if I go for a slide, I'll have a couple extra inches of skin left over. I was worried that the extra height would make it harder to walk in these boots. Not the case. The accordion fabric across the front and the Achilles does a perfect job of keeping my ankle movement totally free. And the weight is also perfect for hiking, 800 grams for each of these 45s, which is an even half the weight of everything else on my list. My only gripe in terms of walkability is the sole. I mean, the minimal tread here is great for a foot peg interface, but not so hot on mucky trails. Now, waterproofing. It's in the name of this boot, and surprise, surprise, it's in the liner too. I mean, this isn't Gore-Tex, mind you, but then again, it's only a $225 shoe. I probably wouldn't worry because the Rome 2 does have some pretty excellent reviews in terms of waterproofing, so it's probably one of the better non-Gore-Tex options out there. Not so hot in terms of breathability though. The synthetic leather on here is pretty suffocating, and to be honest, I think the waterproof membrane underneath probably wasn't all that breathable to begin with. Fitment-wise, the Rome 2 size is just like a regular shoe, and it's bedroom slipper comfortable right out of the box. Closure is going to be done with three Velcro straps that actually give a pretty custom fit. I mean, adventure riders always get all hot and bothered over buckles, but for a softer shoe like this, Velcro is just as good. Now, the middle price range used to be a free-for-all, and we had boots like Garnier's G Adventure, around 400 bucks, that were hugely popular. And it's a little bit more of a rigid shoe, a little bit higher up as well. We have this three buckle closure and this TPU shin plate for a bit more hardware, but there's also a lug sole on the bottom and there's enough flex paneling in here that we're actually able to walk on it. So the G Adventure is descended from the motocross world, but still comfortable and waterproof enough for a bit of touring. The perfect ADV boot, right? Wrong. The G Adventure is a dinosaur. I mean, this boot was great five years ago, but adventure motorcycling is growing really fast. New gear improves month by month, and the old stuff goes extinct. The latest meteorite to absolutely blow away the competition is going to be the Alpine Stars Corazol. And we have the same full grain leather construction, although we get an extra inch of it here. And then we have similar breathable and waterproof membranes inside as well. The one in the A-Stars is called Dry Star. I've ridden this stuff before. It's not as good as Gore-Tex, but it's good enough for me. Look at how the Corazol excels on the medial side. Way bigger shift panel and a way more technical heat shield. Here we have a hard ankle protector baked in, a gripping pattern, and then up top there's suede for pinching against the side of my motorcycle. The Dinosaur, on the other hand, is just plain old leather. No armor, no grip, nothing. Round the back now, reflective, reflective, nothing. <laughs> Doubled up accordion stretch, single accordion stretch. Moving to the outside now, this is the big one. See the dinosaur here has standard buckles screwed right into the leather, not even a malleolus plate in there. The Corzal, on the other hand, has a wealth of hardware. These buckles here are gonna be modern arrowhead designs, and this is stolen right from the Tech 7 and Tech 10 motocross boots. And they're mounted right on this giant hard piece here that actually acts as a biomechanical hinge. See, it allows my ankle to flex up and down, but it actually inhibits those torsional forces that tend to break bones. Ending on the front now, the dinosaur's buckles are going to be hard-stitched into these leather straps, whereas the Corzal's buckles are actually made out of rigid TPU. And this is going to keep the fit firmer and safer, but it still frees up a comfortable amount of movement with these circular spinners here. So when the Corazol landed, every other middle price boot became an endangered species. It is really hard to survive next to this guy, especially when it only costs $330. Fitment wise, the Corazol size is like a regular shoe. I should say that the soles are incredibly rigid. They're still super comfortable and they're perfect for standing up on your foot pegs, but you are gonna look a little bit robotic walking around in them. Think Ski Boots Canada. So Alpine Stars hit the bullseye with the Corazol, but did they also shoot themselves in the foot? Because A-Stars makes the premium toucan for over $200 more, 
And with how impressive the Corza was, I wonder if it still makes sense to go premium. So let's see. On the Toucan, we have a full plasticized inner liner that's gonna offer a little bit more protection compared to the Corza. Both boots have two lower buckles and then Velcro up top, but the Toucan does actually have two contact points for the lower buckle. So that offers a little bit more precise of a fit when compared to the Corza. Both boots, again, have TPU shin shields, but the Toucan actually has a biomechanical hinge in there that's gonna provide progressive flex resistance. So all right, I like how this is going so far. Around the outside, we do get blue accents on the Toucan. That's more of a toony feature than a $200 one to me. But going down from there, we see that we have aluminum arrowhead buckles rather than plastic ones. That's a bigger deal. And then on the ankle, both boots have hinges, but the Toucan's is more substantial. And then going further down, we see that the leather is doubled up around the foot cockpit on the Toucan. And there's also some venting here that the Corzal doesn't have. Based on what I've seen already, I'm sold on the Toucan. This is a better boot than the Corzal, and it's still an exceptional value for money despite the premium price tag. But there is one feature that actually does seal the deal for me. Did you see it? It's Gore-Tex. See, that means 100% waterproofing guaranteed. Fitment-wise, the Toucan is pretty much identical to the Corozal. It sizes just like a regular shoe, and it's very comfortable despite having an incredibly rigid sole. I know in my head that the Toucan is a more bomb-proof boot, but the weight gain only amounts to a negligible 40 grams, so it feels just as nimble on my foot. That's it for my favorite adventure in dual sport boots. I know that, yeah, it was the Alpine Stars show today, but those just happen to be my favorites, so what can you do? Thank you guys very much for watching.